So, hi everyone, this is uh, Trevor and Ali here with our data visualization critique. Um, the diagram we're gonna be talking about today, it comes from a, um, an academic paper in the journal Nature. Uh, it's a machine learning paper where they map um, foods to different cancer uh, beating um, molecules that are found in anti-cancer drugs. Um, so the visualization that we've got laid out here is basically this food map that they created. Um, and yeah, and we're going to talk about this. Okay. Thanks Trevor. So first I'm going to talk about the purpose of this diagram. And since it is in an academic journal, we assume that it is for other academics to read. So again, uh, if you're an academic, this is the thing that you should be reading. If you are a layman who's just interested in cancer and reading about what to eat and what not to eat, uh, you can just ignore the diagrams on the side. And if you are if you don't believe in science, this is probably something that you stumbled upon by mistake. So just move on. So the content of this diagram depends on who you are as the audience of this, uh, the one who views this diagram itself. And though it might look like a complicated diagram from uh, afar, if you zoom into it a bit, you would see that this diagram itself contains different clusters and each cluster contains the molecular, uh, the, the, the types of food which have cancer beating molecules. And the clusters here are showing uh, similar cancer beating molecules. And I, I believe there are around five to six different um, clusters and they have specific food contents, uh, food items there, which uh, are in, uh, av in an average person's daily lives, which they could consume or uh, decrease the consumption of to increase or decrease the amount of cancer beating molecules in their uh, body. The diagrams on the side though show chemical um, compounds, which, as I mentioned before, may not be uh, easy to interpret by a layman, but if you're, uh, um, if you know chemistry, then this is your thing. So Trevor will now talk about the structure and the format of, yeah. of this diagram. Thank you, Ali. So structurally, um, pretty obvious, this is like a network diagram where you've got nodes representing individual foods. Um, and the connections between the nodes are based on pairwise correlations, um, based, like Ali said, based on the specific uh, cancer-beating molecules that are found within the food groups. Um, so structurally, we think that this is a pretty effective way to convey the information because um, you're both getting, you know, based on the, the size of the uh, node, and this goes into the formatting as well, the size of the node represent basically how many of these, you know, anti-cancer molecules are contained in the food, and the color representing, you know, which foods are similar to each other in their profile of these molecules. So structurally, we, we, we think that this is a, a, an effective way to co communicate the information um, formatting wise, we have some questions about, um, you know, exactly the locations of the nodes on this diagram seem a bit arbitrary. Like you'll see, you've got sage and pepper and burdock over here that, you know, distance wise seems like they might belong to this uh, pink cluster, but nonetheless, they are orange and it's not clear exactly why. Um, they've got these, like Ali said, they have these uh, chemical structures uh, superimposed on top, as well as these, you know, food images. Um, it seems like the food images are chosen basically based on the bigger uh, nodes in each group. So garden onion here is a big node, tea is the biggest node here, sweet orange and cabbage, so on. Um, the pictures, I think we're okay with the chemical structures. We're not sure if these are, you know, laid out in a way that they correspond to specific clusters or if they're just kind of randomly um, put there for, you know, aesthetic appeal. Um, and even if you read the, uh, the caption, you don't get much information on why those are there, um, why the specific ones are there and, you know, why they are where they are. Um, that being, and then on top of that, a lot of the, uh, the text, especially in these tighter clusters, like the blue cluster and the green, green cluster, 
uh, it's really dense and it's kind of busy. And, you know, if you're looking for individual foods that might be in those clusters, you know, it's kind of an eyesore to look at. So Ali and I were discussing like an improvement that could be made would be um, maybe turning this into more of an interactive visualization where you can just, you know, hover over different nodes and the information on the food um, that that node represents would, would pop up instead of just having all this uh, small text just kind of pasted on here. Because and then when you've got like these darker red nodes, it's just hard to read, you know, what those letters are that are on top of the red nodes. So structurally, we think that this is a good, um, a good diagram. And, you know, it does convey a lot of information that I think is actionable both to advanced readers and then also to the layman who just wants to know, you know, what food should I consume to try and prevent cancer. Um, formatting wise, we do have, we've got some issues, but overall, we'd say this is a pretty uh, effective visualization. Mm, that's it. Thank you.